people of a different kind. The fact that Jesus was so completely accessible was the very reason and the cause behind some of his heaviest criticism that he ever received. If you've studied your Bible for any amount of time, it doesn't take long to understand when you start walking through the Gospels that Jesus totally surprised people by receiving children. Even the disciples said, you know what? All these snotty little, little kids, these dirty feet little kids, their hair hasn't been combed in days. Look at their dirty face, Lord. They're, they're thronging you. Jesus, if, if you don't mind, we'll just push the children out of the way because they really don't have any part here. This is adult stuff. This is big church time. They, we don't have time for children. And what did Jesus do? Suffer the little children, he said. And allow them to come unto me. And he took a child and he put it on his lap. He said, such is the kingdom of heaven. Yes. I mean, he totally surprised people when he, when he received children. He shocked the elite religionist of his day because he made himself available to those who were marginalized. Jesus welcomed the outsiders rather than ostracized them. Jesus built bridges to the despised rather than walls. And it was his complete accessibility that earned him a title that he never rejected. As a matter of fact, every time someone said that about him, he stood high to the attention, squared his shoulders, and walked forward. That title was Jesus, friend of sinners. That's the kind of people you were, and I was, and maybe some in this congregation still are in that kind of people. Sinners. Jesus, friend of sinners. So think about that. This accessibility of Jesus. Our culture and our background affect who we are. So let me ask you, who are the outsiders in your day-to-day -day schedule? Who are the people that are so different than you. I mean, their skin color is different. Their hair texture is different. The way they walk is different. The way they talk is different. They are totally unlike you. Who are those outsiders in your day-to-day -day schedule that God has placed you inside? He's put those people around your life. Now, what are we going to do with that? How do you exhibit a Jesus heart by accepting others into your circle of life and your community of faith? What are you going to do? How are you going to do it? Now, let me show you a PowerPoint by Timothy Keller. I, I love this quote. It came up, I think, last week on Facebook. Timothy Keller says this. We are, we are called not simply to communicate the gospel to non-believers. We must also intentionally celebrate the gospel before them. Maybe the reason why we are not reaching people different than us is because we have failed to learn how to celebrate the change of the gospel in us. Maybe the gospel change has no longer it no longer has an impact on you. In other words, oh, it was good 20, 30 years ago, but it's not as fresh today. That's not God's fault. Somebody let me teach and preach this morning. That is not God's fault. Maybe you need to remind yourself from time to time in prayer and embrace where God has brought you from. Maybe you need to understand what the horrible bit, how horrible it really was. Maybe you need to understand how migrant the clay really was. You need to understand how stuck you were in sin until Jesus came around and he pulled you out of the horrible pit and the migrant clay and he established your feet on. 
on the rock called Christ Jesus. Maybe you need to remember that. And that will help you reach out to somebody else in the same place. I think we've forgotten how great our salvation is. We've been in this thing so long we have forgotten where we came from. We have forgotten the power that saved us from darkness and placed us in his marvelous light. You see, loving like Jesus requires building a culture and a background different than yours. And to erase different colors and cultures is also to deny your heart a testimony and a fuller understanding of people that are unlike you. Culture and background affect who you are. So, color blindness is not the same as color conscious. Our society at large is definitely not color blind. Now, some maintain they are. Some pretend to be blind, while our society is still racially divided. In our breaking down world, we still need to see that people are being judged and profiled every day in the 21st century due to their skin color and their hair texture. I have some precious minister friends who have to be careful who they hang with and where they go simply because their skin color and their hair texture Somebody has already preconceived idea. Thank you, Pastor, for that word this morning. A preconceived idea. That kind of person probably is a shoplifter. That kind of person is probably a criminal. That person is probably a terrorist. The most unfortunate side effect to color blindness is that it leads us to misunderstanding the salvation and the grace of God. For Christ's sake, will somebody please help me quote 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If any man or woman be in Christ, they are. Not one day they might be, or I hope they are. They are in a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. Your ultimate identity and mine is not found in our skin color and our culture and our background. It is found in the identity of Jesus Christ. Therefore, if any man, any woman be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have passed away. And we hold all things are That's where my identity is. I mean, it's not my skin color. It's my identity in Christ. He is my Savior. I am a joint heir with Jesus Christ. God is my Father. He's your father because I've been born again in the family of God. That's where my identity is. That's where your identity is. Thanks be to God, Jesus transcends skin color and culture to make everything and everyone brand new. Brand new. So you made the image of God. It's unrealistic to remain colorblind. Culture and background affects who we are. And then lastly, the gospel is for all nations. The gospel is for all nations. I like what the David DeHaan said many years ago regarding prejudice and racism. He said this, it matters not what race or gender, rich or poor, or great or small. The God who made us is not partial. <laughs> He sent Christ Jesus to die for all. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. He sent Christ Jesus to die for all. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, I, I long for the day 
when people are no longer judged because of the color of their skin, but because of the content of their character. Yes. And although we have made some huge strides in the right direction, that day has yet to come. Yes. So with that in mind, I want to I challenge us as a congregation. How can we clap our hands, stand to the attention, give God the glory for flags on our back wall and giving over $10,000 last year already to World Missions. How can we rejoice as a mission-supporting congregation while simultaneously promoting prejudice and making racial judgment about people different than ourselves? Anybody still love Pastor Ray this morning? Friends, if we plan to grow up families in a breaking down world, we must be careful how we discriminate. That's right. We must be intentional to celebrate the diversity of people. And we must appreciate the richness of cultural complexities. You see, in the body of Christ, no race, no nationality, or class is better than another. Through the cross, thank God for the cross. Through the cross, Christ has made us one. One. Of all the people on the planet, believers are especially called upon to treat others with honor, with dignity, and with love. And I think one of the finest reasons we have to see the precious colors of God's human creation is this. God never erased distinctions in his love letter. But in fact, quite the contrary. God has always applauded color and culture and creativity. But let me show you a verse of scripture. Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. This is, this is a beautiful set. I don't have time to preach on this particular Let's go back to 5 9, first of all. 5 9. There we go. John, the revelator, is seeing this happen before his own eyes. And the scroll with the seven seals on it is brought, presented by the 420 elders in Revelation 5. The scroll was set at the throne. And the question is who is worthy to open the scroll? open the seals. And the Bible says that the four and twenty elders along with the multitude began saying, worthy is the Lamb who was slain for the foundations of the world. He is worthy to open the scroll. And then John sees this panoramic slideshow of all of the people who remain faithful to God. And those people, part of this verse, and they sang a new song saying, you, Lord, are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. The gospel is for all nations. Over there in chapter 7, watch this. This is the scene continues to unfold. And so and John gets another, another picture of this multitude of people that are spread around the throne of God because they've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. After these things, John says, I look and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes with palm branches in their hands. I'm telling you folks, the gospel is for every nation. The gospel is for every color. The gospel is for every culture and background. The gospel is for whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord and say he shall be saved. Hallelujah. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the same yeah. shall be saved. 
He doesn't look like you. She doesn't smell like you. But the gospel is for them. They don't walk like you. They don't talk like you. But the gospel is for them. They don't drive the nice car that you have. That's okay. The gospel is for them. They don't live in a big house like you have. That's okay. The gospel is for them. They speak a different language. That's okay. The gospel is for them. I saw a great number, Johnson. Yes. You could not number them. You could not count them. From every tribe, every nation, people's tongues standing before the throne. Hallelujah. God was not colorblind when he made us what we are. Watch this. And God was not colorblind when he remade us Amen. who we are. Yes. <laughs> he was not colorblind when he made us what we are. He was not colorblind when he remade us who we are. Hallelujah. God especially celebrates his human creation and redemption no matter what they look like or where they came from. Well, I think it's about high time you and I begin a celebration also. If God celebrates it, when somebody different than you and me comes to his saving grace to reflect Jesus, our Savior, it's time you and I celebrate it. Why is that, Pastor? Well, sometimes we forget. So let me remind you this morning. Paul wrote to the Roman church in chapter 3 and said, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How many is all? I mean, are you excluded when someone says all? If I said all of us are sitting in 209 Park Lane, does that exclude you? Does it include you? All of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. My friend, our sinful nature has put everything and everyone out of order since Adam and Eve were barred from the Garden of Eden. According to the Apostle Paul, after sin entered into the human creation, God was faithful in working toward redeeming every person after Adam and Eve, including Adam and Eve. And oh, what a day that will be when my Jesus and all that he has saved, I shall see. Oh, what a day that will be when I see all the tribe and all the country and all the nation can see and save them. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the world. So let's get used to it down here. So that when we gather up there with all the tribes, from all the tongues, from all the nations, with people you cannot number, let's get used to it down here, folks. Yes, amen. Why not? Why not? I've got a little video clip. I'm going to stay up here and watch playing because it's only about 40 seconds long. But it's power punched. If you wouldn't mind, uh, Troy, there's, a, there's an option, I believe, on the uh, software to let it repeat. Kind of like a little arrow. It's good. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Let, go ahead and play that. Place the left. It doesn't matter how many Sundays you sit in church 
or if you think you are saved. God sees what you do and how you treat people. That's what really matters. Yeah, I want to do it one more time. We're going to stand up. We're going to stand up and sing like we need it. Like we need it. Have to get your big puppet voice on. Okay? Here we go. go. It doesn't matter how many Sundays you sit in church or if you think you are saved. God sees what you do and how you treat people. That's what really matters. Amen. That's what really matters.